Hey guys, it's Tom here from ProDirect Running and the day is finally upon us to review an absolute monster of a running shoe. This is the Adidas Prime X2 Strung. The initial brief for the original Prime X was to create the ultimate training shoe without limits. It was released a couple of years ago in the summer of 2021 when all talk about stack heights and the super shoe market in general was still wide open. Then the strong version of the Prime X came along which rectified some stability issues that people had with the original version with a unique and well-structured woven upper. Now in its second iteration and with a fair few updates going on here, let's jump in to some of the tech. Just as a little disclaimer, at the time of recording, it's still about four weeks from the official launch date of the Prime X2 Strung. So some of the information from Adidas is not yet widely available, but you'll be pleased to know that we've still got an absolutely gargantuan 50 millimeter stack of Light Strike Pro in the heel and about 43 and a half millimeters in the forefoot for a six and a half millimeter drop. Weight wise, we might as well talk about it early doors. We have got a fairly hefty increase on the Prime X2 Strung compared to the V1. Obviously as runners, we always want to see future iterations drop weight, but I think that this is primarily due to the fact that we've got a significantly wider base with the Prime X2 and we've also got quite a few additional elements in the midsole. So on that note, we're looking at just under 300 grams in the UK eight and a half that I've got in my hands, which is an increase of about 50 grams from the previous version. From a visual standpoint, the most notable change is the addition of this forefoot puck or core of Light Strike Pro in the forefoot of the Prime X2. When we were at the Adidas headquarters a few weeks back, I asked the question as to whether this was a slightly different formulation of that midsole compound. And although unconfirmed, it does appear to be slightly softer to the touch to me, especially when compared to the previous version of the shoe. I should also clear up that in the day and age that we live in, there's obviously lots of social media leaks of upcoming releases. And you may have seen some images floating about where the Prime X2 had an additional cutout right at the tip of the forefoot. But this shoe that I'm holding in my hands is the final production ready version of the Prime X2. So I can only imagine that this gap was filled in to potentially help with stability or durability. Within the midsole itself, both of the previous versions featured a carbon fiber plate in the heel, energy rods in the forefoot and carbon blades directly under the forefoot, which is to my knowledge, the first time that a super shoe has implemented three different types of carbon plated technology. With the Prime X2 Strung, I haven't had the opportunity to see a cross section of the shoe just yet, so I don't know exactly what the internals are, but it is very easy to tell that we've still got at least two carbon plated elements going on here. The main changes seem to be visible when you flip the shoe over and take a look at the cutouts in the outsole, and it looks as though we've moved to more of a solid plated construction here, rather than the rods that you'd find exposed on shoes like the Adios Pro 3, the Takumi, and indeed the Prime X Strung original version. The upper appears to have remained relatively unchanged, which is no bad thing. I found it to be really nice and well structured. However, the biggest change comes from the tongue, which is now fully integrated into the upper itself in a booty style construction, opposed to the more fiddly tongue that we had on the original Primex Strung, which I know some people had a few issues with when it comes to getting a comfortable fit on the top of the foot. The only other thing to note is the fact that we've now got some slightly more robust eyelet loops when compared to its predecessor. I personally love the Strung upper from both a technological and visual standpoint. And for me, the fit here is almost identical to what we find in the previous version. I went true to size with a UK eight and a half and it was a nice snug fit for me. Taking a look at the outsole of the Prime X2 Strung, this is where quite a lot of the updates are made. Gone is the somewhat heavy duty, thick coverage of Continental that we had on the previous version. And we've now got an outsole configuration which much more mimics shoes like the Adios Pro 3 and the Takumi Sen. I can only assume that this is a weight saving ploy just to try and counteract the whiteness of the base and the other elements that we've got going on in the midsole. But to be honest, I've got hundreds of miles in the Adios Pro 2, the Adios Pro 3, and other Adi Zero shoes utilizing this same kind of rubber outsole. And I've had absolutely no issues with durability. So I'd still expect to get a similar amount of mileage out of this shoe. I am happy to report, however, that we've still got a nice slice of Continental right in the forefoot, just to aid with traction and durability at toe off. Anyway, tech specs and numbers are all well and good, but this is a special shoe to run in. So without further ado, let's talk about performance.
First up, upon lacing the Primex 2 Strung for the first time, I was aware of a little bit of heel slippage. It didn't fit perfectly around my ankle in Achilles, but all I had to do to rectify this was utilize the final eyelet chain. And after that, I was good to go and had no further lockdown issues. I know some runners historically have found that the design of the latest Daddy Zero shoes can rub the Achilles a little bit, but I've personally never experienced this. And I'm happy to report that on my first 45 minute voyage in the Primex 2 Strung, I didn't have any uncomfortable areas or hotspots. So I actually managed to get my feet in a prototype sample of the Primex 2 Strong way back in April. And ever since then, I was dying to get my feet in a pair properly. The feeling underfoot is honestly like nothing I've ever experienced, which in a world full of amazing super shoes is, uh, is really saying something. Immediately upon your first few steps in the shoe, you can tell that it really wants you to get going at a more steady clip. But saying that, even on my first couple of K of this run, which were at a very easy jogging pace, I didn't find them to be unstable or unnatural feeling, which is a really nice update to the previous version. And I think this is all to do with the fact that we've got a significantly wider base, particularly in the heel of the Primex 2 Strung. Now, I've been lucky enough to try out a lot of shoes over the last few years, but this is hands down the bounciest, most propulsive, most enjoyable shoe to run in of the bunch. And it's particularly noticeable when you're running downhill that the perceived effort is just so much lower than other shoes out there on the market. I know that one of the biggest questions when it comes to a shoe with such a massive stack height is always down to stability, particularly when taking tight corners. And the majority of my run was on fairly well-preserved country roads, but there are definitely some potholes in there, a couple of tight turns and some cambered roads. And I gotta say that I really feel that this is a big step up when it comes to stability. I, for context, ran in the very first Primex uh, a couple of years ago and was unable to really utilize it as much as I wanted to, purely due to fears of rolling my ankle. But this appears to be dramatically rectified with the updates that we've got here. I should preface that by saying I'm not someone who's ever wanted or needed to run in dedicated stability shoes. So if you are someone that needs a lot of extra support on the run, I probably wouldn't recommend a shoe with 50 millimeters stack height of a very soft compliant foam. But if you loved the original Primex, but just found it to be a little bit unstable, I think you're really gonna enjoy the updates that we got going on here. Now, for those of you who might be watching this video and interested in picking up the shoe, but concerned about the increase in weight, it definitely runs significantly lighter than what it says on the scales. I was nervous that perhaps towards the end of the run they would start to feel a bit heavy and clunky and cumbersome, but I'm really happy to report that despite this was only a 45 minute run, that wasn't the case. However, with all of the technology that we got packed into this thing, I would really like to give it a test over a much longer run, 20 miles at a steady clip for example, to really give a solid comprehensive account on that. But so far, so good. The only thing I will say when it comes to performance is despite the super duper foam, all of the plated elements and the bells and whistles, this is not a shoe that I'd want to run particularly fast in. For me personally, I think 3.45 a K or six minute mile range is really where this shoe will hit its sweet spot. Anything quicker than that, and I do think it might start to become a little bit cumbersome on foot. So if you've got a long run on the plan where you're gonna be progressing towards the end, maybe doing a few miles at marathon pace, this is an absolute dream. But if you're doing some K reps or some 400 meter repeats on the track, I still think the Takumi Sen or the Adios Pro 3 are gonna take the biscuit here. For me, this is a shoe that will really come into its own when you're in the midst of a big training block where you might have a two hour run on a Sunday, a progression run on a Wednesday, and your legs are feeling tired and you need something that's just gonna make those miles more enjoyable. All of the stuff that we got going on here is definitely gonna make that feel a lot more pleasant and protect the legs from all of that pavement pounding. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I wouldn't rule out using the Primex Too Strong for easy days when your legs are super beat up from a big session the day before or if you're in the midst of a massive training block. I think this shoe can definitely be a really good tool for those easy days just to take the load off of your aching legs. Although I wouldn't necessarily want to make a habit of using this shoe every day as my daily mileage offering. Overall, I am a massive fan of the Primex Too Strong and everything that it stands for and I feel like it almost needs to be in its own standalone category with other shoes on the market in that super trainer space like the ASICS Super Blast, the New Balance Super Comp Trainer V2. For me the propulsion and the compliancy and the bounciness that you get from this shoe is leagues above anything else and it's truly a unique sensation underfoot. 
Now, don't get me wrong, this does mean that it isn't necessarily the most versatile shoe in comparison to some of the other shoes I just mentioned, but for a specific purpose, I don't think there's anything else out there quite like this. On that note, I think that's just about gonna do it for our first run review of the Adidas Adizero Prime X2 Strung. As always, let us know what you think of the updates to the shoe in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more running content like this, then please do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn your bell notifications on so you never miss a future upload. If you want to grab yourself a pair of the Prime X2 Strung, you'll be able to do so in mid-September at Pro Direct Running.